Also at Ecosperity Week, an agreement signed to adopt new technical specifications for the listing of product-specific emissions data. This would make such data on the Singapore Emission Factors Registry more reliable. The agreement was signed between the World Business Council for Sustainable Development and the Singapore Business Federation. And to explain further, I'm joined by Kok Ping Sun, Chief Executive of the SBF. Mr. Kok, thank you for joining us. Now, can you tell us why do businesses need the registry? How does it, uh, what is, how does this information make, uh, give us more accurate data on carbon footprint? Sure. I think the uh, Singapore Business Federation has set up the SEFR because it helps businesses in three ways. First, it helps businesses by providing a single source of truth for many of these emission factors. Before there was SEFR, companies got to go to different sources to compile these EFs so that they can do their greenhouse gas uh, computation. The second way that SEFR helps businesses is that it provides a registry of localized emission factors. Again, before there was SEFR, companies will have to depend on uh, using foreign indicators such as US or UK. And we know that these emission factors that are being developed using US and UK may not reflect local conditions. Take, for example, the public train system. Our public train systems have very different uh, grid uh, intensity. Uh, they have very different average occupancy rate. And certainly the climatic conditions are very different in Singapore versus UK and US. So using localized factors allow them to develop more accurate factors. And the third reason why the SEFR is useful for businesses is that because the SEFR is pre-integrated with about 20 digital carbon calculators, they've ingested this data, so it makes the company much easier for them to actually uh, complete these submissions. And you ask why companies uh, want to use this data for? Well, I mean, there's a saying, right? What gets measured, you know, then get managed. With this uh, data, with these emissions, it can help them set targets and help them to take action to reduce costs as well as reduce uh, carbon emissions. It all sounds very technical, and there's just <laughs> new tech specifications at the registry. How are they helpful? Well, um, when we launched the SEFR in October, we have a set of about 200 national averages uh, emission factors. So these are compiled largely from government agencies. The announcement that we made today with the WBCSD is that now it enables the SEFR to list product-specific carbon emission data, meaning not just a national average, but product-specific. And these product-specific data are now high quality and is standardized according to the PEC methodology. What that means is that for companies that are looking for product-specific emission factors, they now have a place to do it. If you're looking for a place to consume the data, you go to SEFR. If you're looking for a place to produce this data to help companies make better procurement decisions, SEFR allows you a one-stop shop for you to publish it so that it increases discoverability as well as accessibility. Now, tech company Razer has given the system a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. Will that prompt other companies to use the registry? I think we certainly hope so. Uh, in our discussion with Razer, we know that from their experience that the production of this PCF actually matters in increasing their revenue. We find that, according to them, that many of the international B2C marketplaces have started to look for companies with bet who are greener and have data to support it. And these data are now being incorporated into the algorithm to determine which products get listed first before the consumers buy. And because Razer has been able to show that their products are greener and they got high quality data to back it and they communicate it, now they're getting more sales on that B2C marketplace. And why is it important for Singapore companies to actually know how, what's the carbon footprint like? Well, that's because Singapore has set very ambitious targets. Singapore aims to be net zero by 2050, and it is particularly challenging for Singapore to achieve it, not just because we are small, but because we are disadvantaged from renewable energy. And businesses account for 70% of the carbon emissions, so everybody got to do their part. But I think for businesses, what our message to them is that it's important, not for compliance reason, it's important because there are value creation. There can be cost savings because it's more operationally efficient, there can be cost avoidance because they can get access to green loans. And more importantly, I think increasingly consumers are asking for greener products so they could potentially increase their customer base too. What's been the reasons given for companies that are not so interested in measuring the carbon footprint? Well, we, we did a survey last year together with Bain. We surveyed about 500 uh, SMEs on why, what's stopping them from doing it. So we discovered the reasons are what I call the three M's. No, so this is not Medicare, MediShield, yeah? <laughs> Medi and, uh, Med Medicare, but uh, uh, manpower, method, as well as money. Companies have told us that they don't have the in-house capability and capacity. They don't know where to start and they are cash strapped. So those are the three M's that's limiting them uh, in order for them to do decarbonization. 
But the reality is that there are many resources out there. There's training courses, there's grants, there's even our own NetZeroHub.sg resource portal. But SMEs need a program that is more integrated, that's end-to-end, and handhold them to that journey. Well, thank you, Mr. Cox, for joining us today. That is Cox and Pin the, from the Singapore Business Federation.